we will give darshan and you will be liberated and you will be happy. Nothing there, anything. Don't take anything, donation or anything, only. And in the end you should tell me, oh, who is not chanting by your telling, by this order, then if not doing, I will cut their hand. Then they began to fall, they came very heavy, and they began to go east door to door. Now you. Gananjana Shalakaya Chapshu Militam Jaina Tasma Shri Guru Venama Vanchaka Patru Vista Kripas and Vyavacha Patitanam Padane Vyo Vaishnavi Maha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Vidana Shiva Sadiko Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare First off, on my most respectful basis, I want to look this feet of mine, picture blue, and to get out of Vishnu and Vishnu Pad. I still put us up to Shishima, Shri Gorga, and Gusmaraj. Again, I offer my most respectful basis, I want to look this feet of my sannyas and Shiksha Guru, Om Vishnu Pad. I still put us up to Shishima, Shri Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Gusmaraj, and finally, I offer my most respectful basis, I want to look this feet of my current Guru Days, and to get out of Vishnu and Vishnu Pad. Asta Pura Sata Shishma Chila A.C. Bhakti Gyanta Swami Shri Prabhupada and Nithi Lila Ata Vishnu Vishnu Pada Asta Pura Sata Shishma Chila Bhakti Gyanta Keshe Vishnaj All Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis and especially Sri Gandhi Sanyasis. So Shila Gurudev, he's explained that in Sri Nabri Dham, now Nimai Pandit, he is reunited with his brother Baladev, who is now appearing as Sri Nityananda. Also, so many Vaishnavas, Advaita Charya, Shiva's Thakur, Srila Haridas Thakur. So, he has given the order to Lord Nityananda especially, and Srila Haridas Thakur, that, oh, follow Krishna, Bhaga Krishna, Koro Krishna Shiksha. That, oh Haridas, oh Nityananda, that I want, that you go from door to door, and you ask people that they give one donation. What is that? That they chant the holy names of Krishna. That they worship Krishna. And they follow the instructions of Krishna. So, very blissfully, Lord Nityananda, Sri Haridas Thakur, they left um, Satyananda and Gorahari, and they went down the path of the Ganga. And going, then Lord Nityananda and Sri Haridas Thakur, uh, they would go from door to door and knock. Then, <coughs> knocking on the door of a householder. Then they say, Oh my brother, Bolo Krishna, Bhagya Krishna, Kuru Krishna Shiksha, will you do? Will you do? Hari Bol, please turn, please turn. And then they go to the next door. Oh my brother, Bolo Krishna. Bhada Krishna, Koro Krishna Shiksha. No, you do, my brother. With great love and affection was the mood of Lord Titanya, of Lord Nityananda and Srila Haridas Thakur going. But in their midst, they would see some people who were not so friendly. And they said, Oh, get out of here. What are you? You're a thief and you're coming to Kesara joint. Out, out. In their wanderings, then Lord Nityananda, he saw two brothers, and they were in a very deep, drunken stupor. <coughs> they were sometimes rolling on the ground. Sometimes they would get up and hit each other, and they were big, and they were mean, and they were bad. You'll see on Sunday. 
very big, bad and mean. Huh? Hitting each other. And then the next moment, they would embrace each other and roll on the ground. Totally drunk, out of, this, out of their minds. Lord Nityananda, he looked to one of the town's people and he said, who are these people? I have never seen people in such a degraded, intoxicated state in my whole life. And he was speaking out of great compassion. He was feeling so much sympathy, so much sorrow for them. And then the villager explained that this is Jagarananda and Madhavananda. That they come from a very aristocratic brown family called Pandopathai. And <laughs> they, though being brought up, uh, coming from a very, very high caste, going back for generations and generations, but now they've deviated. Why? Why? Asatsan. Asatsan Tyad e Vaishnava. That one who takes bad association, then this bad association, then it can spoil all good things. And the proof, Jagai and Madai. And now they were associating with other backwards, and they had performed so many sinful activities that the scribe of Yamaraj, his name, Chitra Gupta, just thinking about their sinful activities, trying to copy, huh, that he fainted. Lord Nityananda was thinking that, oh, that these people are so fallen. And my Satyananda Gorahari, he has come to liberate the fallen people of this age. So definitely, if these people, if they become liberated, Jagai and Madai, then certainly my Gora, he'll be celebrated as Patit Pavan, Savior of the Most Fallen. He was thinking that I, Nityananda, that definitely I will deserve the name Nityananda if I can be an instrument of my Lord to deliver these people. So then, Lord Nityananda, Avadut, he does things in a very peculiar manner. Then he went, and he went up to these two drunkards, and he said, Oh my brothers, please chant the holy names. Please worship Krishna. Please take his instructions. And he was speaking with so much compassion, with so much love and affection. We see that Srila Gurudev, that he's bringing that love and affection. Why? Because Srila Gurudev is Nityananda Prakash. That same love and affection is flowing. But how did they retaliate? <laughs> Who are you? What's your name? And immediately they got up and they started to chase Lord Nityananda and Srila Haridas Thakur. Lord Nityananda very gleefully he was running. But Haridas Thakur, he was much older and he was struggling behind. But what saved them was that Jaga and Madai, they were so drunk that they did not know where to go left, where to go right, and they were stumbling and falling, uh, and they just fell down. Then, at the end of the day, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Gaur Sundar, he had instructed Lord Nityananda and Srila Haridas Thakur, at the end of the day, you come back and you tell me about your preaching activities. So then, Lord Nityananda and Srila Haridas Thakur, then they started to explain what happened. And they said, but we came across two drunkards, uh, who were very, very resentful, who were very antagonistic. Previously, they were Brahmanas. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, what are their names? One of the devotees offered, Jagai and Madai, and he recounted their history. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became very angry. That, oh, if they treat my devotees like this, then I'll have to deal with them very, very severely. I'll have to punish them. Lord Nityananda, he said, oh my Lord, that you appear to save the most fallen. That now you have these two, but the whole world, they will become like Jagais and Madais. What will you do? Will you cut off all their heads? No, you are Patik Baba. And if these two are liberated, if they are given praying, huh, then really you will be celebrated as Patik Baba. He said, O oh, Satyananda, please, that you lead them to me. And my desire is that these two will be liberated. Then, Satyananda Gorahari, he said, Oh, Nityananda, 
that because you have this desire, certainly they'll be liberated. Shula Haridas Thakur was there, what he did. After this encounter, he went to Shula Haridas Thakur. Um, Shula Haridas Thakur went to Advaita Acharya, and he said, oh, Advaita Acharya, your Nityananda, he's doing the most odd things. Sometimes he's going into a milkman's place, he's milking the cows, taking the milk and running away. Sometimes he's going to a farmer and he's asking, oh please, can I marry your daughter? <laughs> Another time he's going and he's riding on top of a bull and he's going, Mahesh, I am Mahesh. Other times he's jumping into the Ganga and he's chasing the crocodiles and he's wrestling with the crocodiles. And you know what happens? The crocodiles turn away and they swim away, running in fear. Huh? What kind of person? And now, last thing, he sent me, he took me to these two drunk men who were so, so deplorable state. And they almost, we just about got away with life. And he wants to give them, he says that they will become recipients of this praying. Then Advaita Chari laughed. He said, huh? He said, Nityananda is intoxicated with Krishna praying. And you'll see that very soon that you will not just have those two drunkards, but three of them will be intoxicated. But not intoxicated. Four. Nimai, Nitai, Jagai, Madai. And they'll be intoxicated, huh? With Krishna praying. So, time is running. So then, again, they were walking. And these drunkards, they also saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Nimai coming from Sankit, coming from this um, Ketan with, with, from Shiva's Angam. And at that time, they went to him and said, Oh, I hear your Ketan is very nice. Huh? Can you do one of two goddess Sandhi, Durga? Huh? We have all paraphernalia for this kind of Ketan. What? Oh, we have some wine, just that, and we can have a very good time. And he might just ignore them and just kept on going. Then, Abhadut was passing by one evening, and he saw them drunk. Abhadut was just wondering, absent-mindedly, huh? just going here, going there, mentally, apparently so. But internally, he was thinking that, oh, I want to deliver these two souls. Their eyes were rolling, and in that state, leaning on each other, they looked up and they saw Abadut. And they said, hey, who are you? What's your name? And Nityananda very childishly said, oh, Abadut, what do you want? He said, oh, I'm begging you. And with so much love, he said, please, chant the names of Krishna. Please worship Krishna. Huh? As he was saying, then they took one earthen pot with Madai and threw it and hit Nityananda, and Nityananda, his face was now, his forehead was bleeding and this blood was coming down his face. The devotees, townspeople, they ran and they told Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. As soon as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he might heard, he came from the yoga pit, coming down the banks of the Ganges, huh? and very, very um, roaring, in a very, very roaring mood, and then he called, Chakra! Immediately, the chakra. And he was just about to release the chakra to cut off the head. And then, Lord Nityananda, he got up and then he held him. He said, only mine, that actually, Jagai, he helped me. That when Madai was about to throw, Jagai stopped him and he held his hand. And the pot slipped and it just glanced my forehead. And though blood's coming down like this, it's just a very, very small cut. It's not bad. Nimai just heard that Jagai helped me. And then immediately, Nimai, he went and he embraced. Yes, yes. He embraced Jagai. And immediately, embracing Jagai and saying that you have um, served, done service to my Nittai. Huh? May you be blessed with Krishna praying. All the devotees, they seen him receive the Haribo, 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 Haribo. What happened to Jagai? Receiving the embrace.
embrace of Lord Nitin, of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, huh? he fell to the ground in a state of ecstasy. Hmm? Nimai said, please, he said, get up, get up, get up. And when he got up, the holy names were coming from his mouth. Madai was looking. He was on the ground. They were so drunk, but now, seeing the chakra, all their drunken stupor was gone. And Madai was thinking, how about me? He was waiting for the embrace. And then, it wasn't coming. Then he said, but how about me? Will I not receive mercy? We stole together, we did this together, we did that together, we did this together. So now he's receiving praise, will I not receive praise? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, no. He said, why? But I know who you are. You're the Supreme Lord. That previously, you've liberated so many demons. You've come in so many incarnations. So you can find what? He said, no. Because you have made offense to Nittai. And my Nittai is more dear to me than my very self that I cannot. He said, but you are the Supreme Lord. Definitely you can find a way. Please, find a way. And then he said, only way is if you get the mercy of my Nittai. And looking at Lord Nityananda. And then Lord Nityananda, he said, Oh my Lord, that you have come to give, um, to give um, praying to all of these people that whatever, highest whatever devotional activities are performed, then please you can take that and you can bestow on him. Huh? And whatever bad things I have done, please you discount that. Then um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, but Nittai, that by, you, by your mercy he can receive. Huh? Only by your mercy. And he instructed him to embrace him. And then embracing Madai, then Madai now also, uh, he fell to the ground. And when he was raised up, then he was also chanting Krishna now. In this way, Jagai and Madai, huh? they were not only liberated. In previous ages, the Lord, he would come. And those who were demons, Hiranyakashipu, Hiranyaksha, Shishupal, Nankavakra, huh? they were killed. But now, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come, uh, and with the insistence, with the inspiration of Lord Nityananda, he's not killing them, but he's opened the storehouse of love of God, and now breaking the dam, which is blocking. And what is that dam? That dam is the time factor. And who broke the dam? Lord Nityananda, employing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You are Patik Baba. You have come to give this. So now is time. Now you give it. And now this praying which is coming, starting from Navadweep, this Antidweep Mayapur down, and it's flooding throughout the world, and now coming in Alachua, coming through Nityananda Prakash, in the form of Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Maharaj. <laughs> so, in this way, Gaurila is still going on even today. And we're very fortunate to receive this Gaurila. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he gave instructions. He instructed, Jack, um, his devotees. He said, now you should not see that they perform. What past simple activities they perform. What offenses. What offenses they make. Uh, hitting Lord Nityananda. Don't see. But now you see that they're my surrendered souls. And you should end in this way, instructing Jagai and Madai, that now you take shelter of Harinam and also you serve the Vaishnavas. Nahami Jam Pratati Jam. What pleases the Lord most? Service to Guru, service to the Vaishnavas. You serve the Vaishnavas. And in this way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he took Jagai, Madai, along with Lord Nityananda, the associates, and then they engaged in an uproarious kirtan, going to Yogapi, to the house of Satyananda Gaurahari. Satinanda Gora Hari Ki, Shri Nityananda Prabhu Ki, and the branch of our community service. After this, the lion in the fire, the fell down on the lotus feet of Gautam and Nityananda. Mahaprabhu told them, in future, you should not do any kind of sin. Don't eat meat, eggs, wine, and other sick. Don't give any problem to anyone. Then they promised, Ad Nareva. I am promising that in future, I will never do actions as I have done. But now, what became? Jedi and Nadai became Vaishnava. And 
Yesterday, Delhi used to broom the cars. That all Naudi Pasi used to come to take bath in that cart, serving cart. And those Vaishnav and all others used to come there. Now they used to take the dust of all who used to come to take bath all in same. In this way, honoring all Vaishnav and serving all Vaishnav, they became they became Param Vaishnav. Now if we fair in our week, Kirtan was going. In each and every house of all the home wasi, all the, the householders, wife, husband, children, all and also some neighbors with Kartal they used to chant. Hari Hare Nava Krishna Jata Hare Nama
broken thing, Madanga, and I stop them all. What are you doing? Nonsense. You cannot do Harinam Sankirtan or any Sankirtan. Don't do Hindu one. And next day I will come, I will eat him, you see, I will take everything I punish. Srivas Pandit went to Mahaprabhu and told Chandrakaji Samadhi, Chandrakaji himself came and she broken my brother's And then Mahaprabhu come very heavy. What became? You. So, the first of all disobedience movement in India was not started by Mahatma Gandhi, it was started by Mahaprabhu himself. Seeing the atrocity of stopping the Salankirtan movements, Abhokshikana organized a massive civil disobedience movement in Nagadi, organizing all the Hindus to go out into the streets carrying torches to every all the nine islands and massive Sankirtan, everyone, children, women, men, it was thousands and thousands and thousands of people chanting the holy name and uproar. So this uproar became so voluminous that when they approached the house, the palace of the Chamikazi, then he became very fearful. In fact, he hid in his room. And when he went into his room, Lord Chaitanya actually had a relationship via his maternal grandma, uh, father, mother, father, Noam Bharcha Prabharti. So by their relationship, uh, there was a close kiss and kin with the Kazi and Mahaprabhu. So, so the Kazi was actually like uncle, Mahaprabhu was like nephew. So even though he so organized a civil disobedience movement, when he came into the palace of the Kazi, he was very respectable, respectful for his governmental position. So he was still very sweet and very humble, as all Vaishnavas are supposed to be. So um, he came into his uncle, exchanged respectful greetings, and then he put forward a question to his uncle. He said, my dear Kazi, I have one question for you. He says, the mother cow gives you her milk when you are drinking. And the bulls like your father, he's plowing the fields and you're eating those grains. So the cow and the bull are your father and mother. Why do you slit their throats and kill them? So he spoke this to him. When he had first heard about the incident of Stuck in the Sankirtan, town, he said, I will kill all the Yavanas. The Yavanas were mostly all the Muslims. But he came in here and started a logical debate. So when the Kazi heard this argument, he was very intelligent. And uh, he uh, then posed a question back to Mahaprabhu. He said, Also, well, in your Vedic Shastras, there is also allowance for Kaapu. There is two paths on the spiritual on in life. One is Pravriti Mara and Nivriti Mara, or the path of enjoyment and the path of renunciation. On the path of renunciation, there is a forbiddance of killing the cow. 
So this remark actually was incorrect. The Vedas are eternal scriptures. They're absolute. So whatever they say is good for all time. And so in the Vedas, there is no allowance for that. But Mahaprabhu countered that there are sometimes experiments done with the animals by the first class brahmas by which they can kill a cow and revive it by the power of mantra. Because there are no powerful brahmas in Kali Yuga, this act is forbidden. But he told Kazi, because you cannot perform this act of reviving a cow, there you are for, for you are forbidden for killing this animal. And it is also said in Shastra, we have Narada Purana, Asumidam Gavalongam, Asanyasam Palapatrikam, that there are five acts that are forbidden in this Kali Yuga, one of which is cow killing. So, <clears throat> in this way, Mahabhu challenged him and uh, defeated him because the cow is a very one of the seven mothers. And therefore, the mother should be always respected, and of course, her life should never be taken. So then, Mahabhu um, also had another question. He said. My dear Kazi, also I noticed that you have initially stopped this Sankirtan, but now I see Sankirtan going on around Navadvip. So this seems to be a contradiction. How is it you are now allowing this Sankirtan to go on? So the Kazi said, I can tell you, but I have to tell you in a private place. I cannot tell you right here. So Mahaprabhu said, we are all familiar with each other, no one here is envious, why don't you speak in front of everyone? So the Kazi unfolds his mind, he said, I'll tell you the truth, because I had a dream. After that night when I smashed the Madranga and stopped the same time, there was a half man, half beast, or a man who had a head of a lion who came into my room and jumped on my chest and with long nails scratched my chest and he revealed to everybody he scratches on his chest. He said, if you do anything to stop my saying your time movement, then I will tear you to pieces. <laughs> so I was very afraid. <laughs> I didn't want to see that first beast again. So I made sure that the same time moon is not in here. So then, uh, he was, well, Kazi was talking, he was talking about your Hare Krishna movement. He says, actually, Mahaprabhu, your Hindus, they worship God as Narayan. So I see Narayan as you, God himself. So when Kazi said this, Mahaprabhu said, actually, you are completely pure. Because you have chanted three names, Hari, Narayan, Krishna, I accept you as pure. So, this is the power of Nam Sankirtan. This is the glories of the movement that Lord Chaitanya himself started, started founder of Acharya. We are carrying on in those footsteps, taking the holy name from village to village, to town to town, as a petition to Mahaprabhu, Jitya Yachira, Narayana, Gram, Savajar, Patrol, Haribi, and Maranam, that in every village, every town of the world, this name of Krishna will be heard. So we want to participate in Lord Chaitanya's movement, then we should carry this name to all the villages and all the towns of the world. So when Mahaprabhu said that to the Kazi, that Kazi's heart melted, he fell down to the feet of Mahaprabhu on his chest and said, I will ensure you that from all my generations, even after, after I had left, no one in my dynasty shall ever stop your Sankirtan movement. So, the Chan Kazi was very merciful, and even during, uh, I just said in history that even during the Muslim Hindu riots that were sometimes took place, the Sankirtan movement was still not stopped in Nadia. And uh, even though we have a lot of Hindu and Muslim problems, Actually, the Hindus and Muslims also used to get along very well, even during the time of the Muslim occupation. 
The actual conflict between the Muslims and the Hindus was started by foreigners outside of India. As you might know from studying the history. So, Bukhazi um, permitted the Sanskritan movement. Bochitania succeeded in defeating him. And anyone who goes to Navadvi, they can see the Samadhi of Tanakazi, which is a chapa tree. There's a chapa tree coming out of it. A very beautiful tree down the road from Bhakti Siddhanta, Sanskrit Mount. So, in this way, the Mahaprabhu and Tanakazi really unfolded. And thank you very much. But I would like to make one comment, if I may, about the previous Leela. I was told by Asha Maharaj, because when the little Bhagavad Nitya, Nitya, Tibay Madai was finished, the devotees noticed that there was a black mark that came on the back of Mahaprabhu, which was all oh, the simple activities of Tibay Madai. So Mahaprabhu told them, if you do Kirtan, this simple mark will remove from my back and it will go into the hearts of all those who are blasphemers, those who are committing Vaishnava Brahman. So Guru says that there is so many hellish planets, but Krishna has to conceive of a worse planet for those who are Vaishnava Brahmis. So those who commit any kind of sin towards some person who is trying to preach the glories of the Lord all over the world, those deep sinful reactions come under their heads. So we should never commit Vaishnava Brahman. We should recognize the devotee. The devotee can be even more powerful than the Lord himself, as in the case of Hanuman and Ram Lila, who jumped across Sri Lanka. Even though Ram had to make a bridge, Hanuman jumped. So the servant of the Lord can even in some cases become more glorious than the Lord, just like Krishna made Arjuna more glorious on the battle of Kurukshetra. So those who have surrendered to Nityananda, Nityananda can empower them to become just as glorious and more glorious as him, than him, as in the case of his divine grace, Bhakti Vedanta Maharaj is spreading the voice of the Lord all over the world at such an advanced stage. So all the words in the
and ordinary people, they will take eat, meat, free and other things. But those who are some religious, they will not take all these things. But Mahaprabhu told <coughs> that even their father and mother, we should not take it. And he gave some examples. You remember? That arguments he gave. <coughs> oh, yes. Then from ancient times, they used to do fatricide. And there, Gomit Yagya, Kaud was shattered. And then what becomes? The rishis again you to recite mantra and the cow who is killed, oh he, oh, in a very long way, fall. So if you can kill them and again you can, then you can do it. What rishi you to do? That is why in Kalyu five things are prohibited. Asomedam Gavalambam for this. So then Kaji could not tell anything, he became silent. And then he told, promise. In my dynasty, I am declaring that anyone will not cut or take any beef or anything. And they will not give problem for some people. If they will do and take B, then I boycott them. Ah, boycott them forever. Forever. This. So in this way, now everywhere, Chandrakaji Samadhi or anyone, now no giving problem for some people. Now. Without fear, all began to do kirtan and they used to honor Nimai Pandit. But there were some Padua, as students and teachers of Navadi, were against of this kirtan movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They used to think that Nimai coming from Gaya, now he is doing something else which is not right. One day some students went to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at that time, oh, he was in mood. In mood. He was telling that you should tell Gopi, Gopi, Gopi. Not Krishna. Not Hare Krishna or anyone. The Padua students came. And they saw, then they turned the fight. Now you are uh, chanting Gopi Gopi, not Krishna. Then Mahaprabhu became furious, angry. He was in Abhyatmik, in Gopi mode. Because Krishna sometimes he was cheats. So he was angry. Then, when he took some stick and then run after him to beat him, and that Padua, that student, run away. Run away. But now they had a meeting of all the students of Naudi. And they decided, oh, if this son of Sashi Maya, he will be do, we will also beat him. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard this. And he began to think. Anila, Kipalu Khanda, Kipalika Khanda, Kop Nivadite, Purakiya Bale Kop Nahi Nivadite. I brought some sweet candy to remove cough. Mucus. Mucus. But it went on increasing. 
first thing, I came to give bhakti, and now they are making offenses to me, demand to me. Oh, I should not be now rehearsed. And what became Shyamra? Om Ajnanam Chimiram Dasya Jnanam Jana Salakaya Chaksuram Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Guru Vena Srila Gurudev has ordered me to speak about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Sanyas Lila. As he explained, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu manifested so many moods over so many years of his pastimes in Navadweep. And his deepest mood, the mood which he came to this material world to experience, that is Krishna, the mood of the gopis, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu one day was feeling great separation from Krishna in the mood of the gopis, chanting Vrindavan, gopi, gopi. And one of his students, challenged, why are you chanting Gopi Gopi? There's no mention of Gopi Gopi in the Vedas. You should be chanting Krishna. And from chanting the name of Krishna, you'll get great piety. So Mahaprabhu, in the mood of the gopis, just as when Srimati Radhika was feeling separation from Krishna in Udavkiri, when Krishna went to Mathura, she was uh, chastising Krishna in her mind and to the bumblebee, that Krishna, for no reason, he cut off the nose and ears of a woman, he's such a debauchee, he killed Bali, the king, without any good reason. He's a cheat, as Srila Gurudev said, why should I chant the name of Krishna? So, he, in that same mood of Shrimati Radhika and the gopis, he went to beat that student and chase him. And that student became so afraid and fleed for his life and went to all of his student friends. And when they asked what happened, he said, What do you mean what happened? I'm glad I got here alive. And he explained how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was going against the Vedas. And the other students and teachers who were very puffed up by their material learning and their uh, birth as a brahmana, not understanding at all the moods of Mahaprabhu, they said, who is he? He's not any more important than us. So what? He's the son of Jagannath Mishra. Our father is no less than him. We're also brahmanas. We can give him curse. So they were planning in conspiracy to beat him. And so as Srila Gurudev explained, one day Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, deep in thought, he was uh, saying, his associates were there. I have come to give Deepali Kanda a sweet medicine that cures mucus, but instead it increased the mucus. I came to this world to deliver the world from the clutches of Maya, repeated birth and death, and to give them praying. But instead, by my activities of revealing my mood, I'm destroying the world. How? because these people are offending me. That's the worst thing that they could do, is commit offenses to me. They'll never be able to be delivered. So, just as a pure devotee humble, if anybody wants to harm him, that devotee only wants to do good, just like Pallad and his father. So Mahaprabhu said, I must do something good for them. I'll take sannyas, and in that way they will show me respect, and in that way they can be delivered. So he didn't want everybody to know. So he told a few people of his plan. He told Nityananda Prabhu, Gadadhar Prabhu, Chandrasekhar Acharya, and his mother also knew, and Mukunda knew. Yes. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu knew that his m mother would not be able to remain alive. Even Nityananda Prabhu thought, how could he do this terrible thing of practically killing his mother? There's no way she'd be able to remain alive. Even Gadadhar Pandit said he's supposed to be following religious principles, but it's against religious principles 
to leave one's poor mother. So Mahaprabhu went to his mother, who was on the verge of death, knowing this future separation, and he consoled her by telling her that you're always my mother. Anywhere I am, in any birth, you're always my mother. You were Krishna, and I was Krishna Garba. You were Prasaya, and I was Ram. In every birth, you were Jashoda, and I, Krishna. In every birth, you're my mother. We can never be separated. She was somewhat consoled, but she and everybody else who knew couldn't stop but weeping and being stunned like statues. Then the morning, oh, before, some days before he took sannyas, he was visited by a sannyasi from Katva, Kantak Nagara, named Keshava Bharati. Keshava Bharati was visiting Navadweep, and as it's the custom, householders always invite sannyasis to their home. Bonafide Vaishnavas who worship Lord Narayan, Takarji, Shalagram Shila, they will ensure that bona fide prasadam is there, and so the sannyasis can take prasadam. So Keshu Bharati came to the house of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, at which time Mahaprabhu begged him for his mercy, because he's in the role of a householder. Please give me your mercy and deliver me from this material world. So Keshu Bharati told him, you can't cheat me, I know who you are. I know you're the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and I am just your servant. I'll do whatever you want me to do. So then he left Nabadweep and went back to his village. And then the day came where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was going to take sannyas. And that day he very joyfully performed Sankirtan over throughout Nabadweep, went to all of his friends, embracing, joking, talking with all of his friends. He went to Kolaveti Shridhar, who he would always joke about uh, taking his uh, lokis and subjis. And he said, please give me a loki. Or Shridhar gave him a loki, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu thought, no longer will I be able to take these gifts, so I must take it tonight. So he gave that to his mother and said, please make me lot loki, very sweet. And somebody else gave milk, so he gave that to her. Please mix this milk with the loki and make a wonderful sweet preparation with sugar, camphor, and so many nice spices. Then he went to the room of Vishnu Priya Devi, his eternal consort. And he was acting very differently with her that night than he usually did. They had been married for many years, but in all those years, he had hardly paid any attention to her. He was always in the mood of separation from Krishna, ha Krishna, ha Krishna, and dancing in the ecstatic kirtans, as you've heard in the past few days. But now, he entered her room, and he was dressed very lavishly, like a rich householder. And he started speaking to her with very loving words, decorating her hair, decorating her hair garlanding her, giving tambul, giving tambul bitika, pan, mouth, with his own hand, with his own hands into her mouth. So naturally, you might have expected that she would have been very happy and enjoyed this, but not at all, because she was remembering that earlier that day when she went to take her bath in the Ganges. On the way to the Ganges, she stubbed her toe, and it was bleeding. Then, while she was bathing in the Ganges, her nose ring, which she had received at the time of her marriage, fell off into the Ganges. And she looked and looked and looked, searched everywhere, but couldn't find it in the water. So then she began weeping and went home. And Mother Sachi asked her, why are you weeping, daughter? Why are you weeping so bitterly? And she told her what had happened. And she said, I fear that something very inauspicious is about to occur. So she remembered this 
at the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's speaking so lovingly, decorating her hair, giving her tambu vidika, and she's thinking that this confirms, he's never spoken to me hardly, what to speak of with loving words, and now he's speaking so sweetly to me. Surely something inauspicious is going to happen. She's thinking, just like a hurricane lamp, just before it's about to go out, it makes a, it rises in its light, and it goes, buk, 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 finished, and then it goes out. So she's seeing, here's the rise of affection in my Lord Chaitanya, and I know something's going to go out. So she tried to stay awake, but no matter how try, hard she tried, by the Lord's influence, Yoga Maya made her eyelids so heavy. She sat on her eyelids, it became like 10,000 pounds. She couldn't keep her eyes open, and then she fell asleep. Then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu rose, looked back at her once, and then left. And just at the doorway, he saw his mother, Sachi Mata, standing just like a statue, not able to say a word. Tears all dried up. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu fell at her feet, circumambulated three times, told her, you're always with me in my heart, I'm always with you in your heart, but I have to go now to search for my beloved Krishna. And now it's the dead of night, and very cold and raining, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in that condition, jumped into the Ganges, very freezing water, and swam all the way across to the other side, to Kantak Nagara, where he went to the place of Keshava Bharti. And so many devotees found out that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was about to take sannyas. So they all began to grieve, fall unconscious, weep bitterly, become stunned, and they all went to that place. And Chandrasekhar Acharya was uh, requested to perform all the ritualistic ceremonies. Kadara Prabhu was there, Nityananda Prabhu, Mukunda Prabhu, as the chief assistants to his taking sannyas. The barber was called. Of course, Keshu Bharati was so happy. He was in ecstasy. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him, I had a very strange dream. In that dream, a great personality appeared to me, and he gave me the sannyas mantra. I'm not sure if that was actually the sannyas mantra. Can I tell it to you, and then you can tell me if it's right? So Kesha Bharati, of course, agreed. And Mahaprabhu told that mantra into the ear of Kesha Bharati. Yes, that's it. And then Kesha Bharati told it back to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In other words, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was actually the initiating guru and not Kesha Bharati. So he was in so much ecstasy knowing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission and that he was actually going to have his association, whereas the whole of Navadvip was going to become like a vacant morgue. Everybody would be so miserable, like the next minute they were about to die. So the barber came to shave Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's head. Just that thought, just as the other members of uh, residents of Navadvip and the barber just thinking about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu not having a shave, not having his curly, beautiful black locks of hair, and not being able to put a garland on those beautiful curly locks. Even that barber began to weep. But somehow or other, he was able to do it, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas. And then he said, now I'm leaving. I'm going to the forest to find Krishna. So Kesha Bharati said, I want to go with you. So Mahaprabhu took Kesha Bharati and Mukunda and Gadadhar Pandit and Chandrasekhar remained to go back to Navadvip.
to give the message to all the residents and to try to console uh, Sachi Mata. And later on, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he went to Puri, then he wanted to go to Vrindavan, he came back to Shantipur. And at that time, oh, one thing, Sachi Mata had been fasting for 12 days, just about to leave her body, not eating, not sleeping, nothing. And then they told her, now your life has returned. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to see you in Shantipur. So everybody went from everywhere. Somehow or other, millions of people fit on the boats to go to Shantipur. Thousands of people got on the boat, the boat sunk, and somehow or other, by the power of the Lord, they were all able to swim across the river. Some people put a barrel on their stomach and used the barrel as a raft. Everybody was building rafts and somehow or other getting to the other side. So millions of people from all over Godadesh was there to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his new sannyas Desh. At that time, Sachimata was there and requested him that don't go to Vrindavan, go to Puri, stay in Puri so that I can at least get some messages about you, some information about you. So everybody was there except one person. And who is that? Vishnu Priya. Why? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is teaching us that if we want to do bhajan of Krishna, then it may be easy to give up some things. But if one can give up the most near and dear thing to him, then that shows Krishna that I really want to do bhajan. So the most near and dear to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was Vishnu Priya Devi. And she was thinking, what fault is there in me that everyone is here to see uh, Nimai Pandit, or now he's Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Uh, Keshav Bharati was thinking, what name can I give my new sannyas disciple? Well, he's spreading the name of Krishna, so I'll call him Sri Krishna. And he's giving life in Kirtan to the whole world, the whole universe. So I'll call him Chaitanya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. So now, Vishnu Priya is thinking, everybody is coming to see my Lord except me. What is my fault? My fault is that I love him more than anybody else. And that's why I'm away. And he also loved her more than anybody else. So he's teaching, this is what's required to do bhajan. So what did Vishnu Priya do after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left? Srila Gurudev explained that although Mahaprabhu is so renounced, Vishnu Priya is even more renounced than he. She would chant all day and night the Hare Krishna mantra and always be absorbed in the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Krishna. And every time she would chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, she would take one grain of rice as a counter, counter a bead, and move it. And then gradually she did that all morning till noon. And then she had some grains of rice, she was chanting and chanting, and she cooked those grains of rice. First she washed them with her tears of separation, and then cooked them, mixed with some vegetables, gave that to Sachi Mata. Sachi Mata offered it to her Narayan deity, and then gave a very small portion to Vishnu Priya. And then she would honor that prasadam. So this very same Vishnu Priya, she is a Satyabhama in Krishna Lila. And Srila Gurudev was asked, how can uh, Navadvip is not different from Vrindavan, so how can Satyabhama come to Navadvip? So Gurudev explained that there is a statement in the Vedas that all contradictory elements rest harmoniously in Krishna. So Radharani became Gadadhar Pandit, Lalita and Vishaka became Surup Damodar and Rai Ramananda. And all the different incarnations, Rama, Nishringa, Varaha, everybody, all the incarnations were present in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So all their devotees were came to get the darshan of Mahaprabhu, who is the sum total of all incarnations. So Vishnu Priya 
is the eternal consort of the Lord. And Gurudev tells how in Modi that same uh, Vishnu Priya as Sita asked Lord Ram, why are you smiling? He said, well, when I come as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I will uh, leave you. Now, I will abandon you and you'll go to the forest. Then, in our uh, pastimes as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and um, Vishnu Priya, I will go to the forest. In this incarnation as Ram, I will worship your deity, and in our pastimes as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Vishnu Priya, I will give you a deity of me. So she would worship that deity and actually talk to that deity. And they would associate in that way. When Sita asked Ram, why do you want to leave your wife, Vishnu Priya, what, and your mother, what benefit is there in that? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained that there's two parts of love, separation and meaning. And without separation, which Shulabhati Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur says, separation and meaning increase unlimitedly forever in praying. Without that separation, meaning can't be nourished and nourished uh, infinitely forever. So this is the glory of Vishnu Priya. Gurudev said all males should become like Shula Raghunath Das Goswami and all ladies should become like Vishnu Priya Devi. In this way, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in the house of Advaita Acharya, Shashi Maya told her, told him or paid him, O oh Prabhu, until Mahaprabhu be, be here, I will cook for my son and he will take prasada. Then Adveta Chat also uh, was angry to this point. Also, Sachimaya, Chaitanya uh, Mahaprabhu, first day when Sachimaya met to Chaitanya, Chaitan Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitan Mahaprabhu at once fell on the feet of Sachi Maya and told, O oh Mother, I became mad. I took sannyas. If you want, I will give up sannyas and everything. Again I will come to you. What you want? Then Sachi Maya told, Oh, now you have taken sannyas. So I cannot tell you that you should give up sannyas and come again to house. But one thing, you should promise that you will not go to Vrindavan because it is very far away and Jagannathpur is very nearer to my house. <coughs> time to time, the person from Puri will come and go and from their mouth I will hear about you. But if you are in Vrindavan, I cannot hear. Mahaprabhu promised that I will not go to Vrindavan and going to Nilachal. Then, after four, five days, ten days, after ten days, Mahaprabhu again did pranam to Sachi Maya and took his permission and took permission of a Vrinta Charya, took Nityananda Prabhu, Chandrasekhar Acharya, Kadadhar Pandit, Mukunda, only five person were. only these five. And then he oh, proceeded towards Jagannath. Oh, that part happened. Yana Tivaramasya, Janandina Salakaya, Chakshur Urmita Vyena, Tasma, Sri Vrena, Vansha Kalpa Turupyasya, Vita Sindhu Vedatya Patita Nam Pavaretyo, Vaishna Vedyo Namona. First of all, I offer thy omnipotent 
creation, he lives as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yeah? In Navadvip, he is not Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In Puri, he is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Or in Godavari, yeah? just as like in Vrindavan, Krishna never sets one step outside Vrindavan. Krishna eternally stays in Vrindavan. So does Srimati Radharani. But Krishna has several aspects. Yeah. As does Srimati Radhika. Then Krishna goes to Mathura as a Naimiti Lila. Then Srimati Radhika sees in Nandagan, Udakhyari, experiencing extreme deep moods of bhav, yeah. feeling separation, Dibyonman, Pradyaupa, so many ecstatic moods she's experiencing. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as we heard the first day, so the second day, he came to experience these moods of Srimati Radhika. What she is experiencing when she remembers yeah, our meetings, how, why is it that she embraces the Kamal tree? Yeah. What is it what she experiences, the happiness when she remembers the sweet playing of my flute, or the smile on my face, or the beautiful form and the activities that we have performed. So meeting and separation, these two aspects, they, they help each other in the happiness yeah, of love, of praying. When there is meeting, then externally we are happy, but internally we forget. We are not experiencing so many things that are left out. Because as we, uh, when we are in separation, then the beloved and the lover, they remember all the sweet pastimes that took place when they were meeting. So internally there is an ex intense experience of happiness. That is the special uh, quality of separation. In Prem Sarova, Sri Krishna was astonished when he saw Srimati Radhika sitting on his lap, a bumblebee coming, yeah? and she was so much in mood that she said, chase that bumblebee away. And then Madhu, Madhu Bangal, he chased that bumblebee away. And when he came back, he said, I chased Madhu Sudan away, he will never come back. Don't worry. Then Sri Matiradika fainted. Oh, my Pramanath, my most beloved, he has gone away, he is never coming back. In the lap of Krishna, she fainted. And Krishna was so astonished how she felt such a high mood of separation by being in his presence that he thought, yeah, I should. Go to Mathura. This was one of the reasons. I should go out of Braj. And then they will all be very happy experiencing, remembering my presence. Yeah. Then Mahaprabhu, yeah, for this very reason, he went out of Navadvip to experience these deep moods which Srimati Radhika experienced in Nandagaon. Yeah. In Vrindavan, Krishna is Prajyadinandana, Shana Sunda. <coughs> when he goes to Mathura, his mood is changing. No longer he has the peacock feather, the flutes, the gopa dish. When he goes to Dwarka, it is not there. And when he goes to Kurukshetra, also not there. Similarly, when Srimati Radhika is in Vrindavan, in Braj, she has these deep moods of Madhanakya Mahabhav, meeting with Krishna. And she's called there Vishakaru Nandari, she's complete. Yeah. And there the eternal Ashtakarya Lila are taking place. Not in Mathura, not in Dorka. <coughs> when she is in Nandagam, when Krishna goes to Mathura, she's called Biyogini Radhika. Yeah. Always in the mood of separation from Krishna. Not Vishakaru Nandari. And when she goes to Kurukshetra to meet with Krishna, she is Samyogini, 
Radhika. Similarly, when Mahaprabhu is in Navadvip, yeah, he is complete. Yeah. He never leaves Navadvip. Very eternal Ashtakarya Lila, Shitakari Mahaprabhu is going on. When he takes sannyas and he goes out of Navadvip, he goes to Godavari to meet with Rai Ramananda to learn yeah, about the deep ecstatic moods that Srimati Radhika experiences. Why Mahaprabhu appeared for this reason? Srimati Vishakadevi, Rai Ramananda himself, is teaching in Godavari yeah, these deep moods. <coughs> Why is he is doing that? Yeah? Shri Gurudev explains. Why not Swaru Damada could have explained, explained that? Because Swaru Damada, he is the incarnation of Lalita Saki. And Lalita Saki has some different moods than Srimati Radhika and Vishaka Devi. Vishaka Devi is born the same day as Srimati Radhika. She has the same mood as Srimati Radhika. She can very easily explain and teach Mahaprabhu in the form of Raya Ramananda, and that is called the mood of some yogini, Radhika, which was in Kurukshetra. So Mahaprabhu experienced this in Godavari, then going to Puri as a sannyasi, always absorbed in the mood of the yogini, Radhika. What are the deep emotions, spiritual emotions, that Srimati Radhika experienced in Nandagan, Udav Kheri, he is experiencing this with the help of three and a half internet associates in Gambia. Saru Damada, Raya Mananda, Sikhi Mariti, and his sister, yeah. Madhavi Devi. So in Gambira, he is experiencing these deep, deep moods. Why is this for us, the living entities, to remind us that unless we develop a mood of separation, we will not be able to meet Krishna. Mahaprabhu is teaching by his own example, and he has empowered Srila Rupa Goswami to teach the living entity this mood of separation. Like in the morning, Srila Gurudev was asked the question, how can we develop this mood? Gurudev said, first with Guru, yeah, with Sri Guru, if we feel separation from Gurudev, then we can also nourish our mood of separation for Sri Krishna. So this is Mahaprabhu's primary goal for the living entities, to help us realize that this mood of separation uh, is very most important for our background. So this reason Mahaprabhu, he took sannyas and as an Aimitip Lila, he left Navadvip in order to teach all living entities the mood of Bhajan in separation. Now we may say, what is it? Yeah. We hear that in separation there is so much happiness remembering the intimate uh, emotions that we experience when we are meeting. That it says for this happiness is more, it gives more happiness, it is superior than the happiness of meeting. But Sri Gurudev telling, for a neutral person, it may be like that. But really, for gopis, it is not like that. Gopis, they want to meet Krishna always. What they experience in meeting, it may be so much happiness. They came to Kurukshetra, they met with Sri Krishna, but they were not satisfied. They wanted to meet with Krishna in Braja, yeah, where the all the Inhabitants of Braj, the peacocks, Govardhan, yeah, Delhi, Chameli, all is there, Kalindi, and that is where they want to meet with Krishna, not in Kurukshetra or in Dwarka. Yeah. They want to meet in Vrindavan. So this is the uh, inspiration which Sita Kari Mahaprabhu, by the medium of Sita Rupa Goswami, is bringing to the living entities that we can perform this bhajan in the mood of separation in order to attain yeah, 
the eternal shelter of the service of Shri Radha and Krishna. But that is why Mahaprabhu took sannyas and left Mahavi. <laughs> now Mahaprabhu is going with his associates to Puri, and there the Astan took place of breaking the Danda in three pieces. I, I want to stop here and ask Brother Mahaprabhu, is there anyone to help me? When he left Santipur and began to go towards Jagannathpuri, so many days went. Sometimes Jagannath used to go to pay something and bring and tell. They used to take prasadam in this way. When they reached nearer to Puri, a, a place, uh, now uh, Sattabhama Pur, and there Mahaprabhu went to bed and kept his done with Jagdananda. Jagdananda was getting this dunt. Nityananda Prabhu took this dunt and broke. That whole world takes Mahaprabhu in his heart and Nitya, um, he will carry this dunt with his hand, it is not good. And he at once did into three pieces. When Mahaprabhu returned back, oh, where is my Dhanta? Then he can unfold it in pocket. How it broke? Oh, he went dancing and fell upon this and... So, then he thought that Nityananda Prabhu had done, then he became angry. One day, in this stage, God was, God was alone with me. None was with me. And you broke it and fell away in the this river. Netanand Prabhu told us, I have not broken. But then he told Mahaprabhu, I will let go with him walk. Either you should go ahead or myself go, you should come. And then they told that Prabhu, you should go forward. Then Mahaprabhu began to walk to temple and walk became, we will discuss tomorrow. This little girl will come and sing a song. Marsipuli has given some initiation and tomorrow no more initiation. Come on here. Initiation will take place again day after tomorrow, 9 a.m. So no more initiation tomorrow, initiation will take place day after tomorrow, 9 a.m. And so many new devotees has come who has not met with Gurudev yet. For them I am announcing they can meet tomorrow with Gurudev between quarter to ten to ten a.m. in Gurudev Bhajan Kuti or Mukunda Prabhu's house. And tomorrow is being Harinam Nagar Sankirtan. So all the world will take part in Nagar Sankirtan. They should not come to for Darshan, only the new band people who are submitted in Gurudev, they will come there. Hare Krishna. And who and who has not met with Gurudev, they can contact with Sipad Mukunda Prabhu and sign their name and Mukunda will send them there. No old people who has met with Gurudev already. Because there is no big place and tomorrow all have to go for Nagar Sankirtan. Hare Krishna. Nagar Sankirtan, 11.30 tomorrow. Actually, if you go to registration booth, right after the program, Hindu Party is organizing. 
and day after tomorrow you higher sacrifices at 10 am here in camp ground who has taken second initiation for male person they have to shave their head and clean cloth and they come for higher sacrifices for female devotee no need to shave their heads and they will also come in higher sacrifices who has taken harinam or diksha anyone all will come in higher sacrifices hari krishna
Hare Krishna. Now we have a, a small competition for devotees. They will speak for three minutes about the glories of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And the winner will get Sri Gurudev's garment from today. So, uh, ladies first today. Radha Kanti, Didi, you can speak first. You have the whole audience. Three minutes. Any other speakers? Ram Govinda Prabhu, you can come up in front. Ram Govinda Prabhu. Sahadev Prabhu. And Giridari Prabhu. Shima Tadavika. This is the essence of all the Bhagavatam and all 
minutes. So tell me he says he gives birth. Okay. So he says She gives birth. She's the original of all rasas because she is the original of Madhuri Ras. So all rasas manifest from her. Without Radhika, there is no rasas. She is Janmariya Sedato Anvaya Kitaratash. This is Rasa Lila actually. And she is directly manifest with Krishna. And when she leaves Rasa Lila, she is indirectly there. Abhigya, she's full of knowledge because she's the embodiment of the 64 arts and Swarat, very important word. She is independent. Krishna's not. When Radhika leaves Rasalila, Krishna goes one and shaka shaka kote gopi, millions of gopis. But Krishna's not satisfied. So he goes running after her and is weeping and weeping. Oh Radhe, oh Radhe, Radhe, where are you? So he falls at his at her feet, and at this time, who is independent? Shumatra Also, Madhavakya Mahabharata. She self manifested it. It's not manifested from anybody, not from Krishna. So she is independent. Then a Brahma Hidaya. She herself infused all this knowledge in the heart of Sutra, the, the parrot, all these verses. And uh, even the family gods become bewildered. Mohyan Kishura has Kaju Vani Mrikam. So it's actually Rasalila. Kaju means fire, the moon becomes paralyzed. Vani means the water, the moon becomes still. And Vani, I mean, Mrikam, the earth, which is solid, melts the stones. And she also manifests. The Sri Hu and Nila Shakti. So Satyam Param Suanaseva means beyond this Maya, this cheating place. There's a transcendental God of Golo Prida or Radhika is always engaged in giving pleasure to Krishna. So Satyam Param I meditate in the supreme truth, Srimad Radhika. So no one was able to come and give this essence. The four Ramanujacharya Sampradaya. Then Vishnu Swami, Nimbaritya, Madhavacharya, all three, the law was able to bring that five, six, the essence of Bhagavatam, which is Radha Dasya. So, Bhagavatam, Anartika, Charin, Chira, Tharane, Vartiganu, Tavar Paritum, Unata, Ujvara, Rasa, Sodakti, Hiya, Shriya, Hari, Purata, Sundari, Ruti, Sada, Bhakan, Sadahidaya Kandares Puratu Pasta Chiranta. Arriba! Next one, this audience, listen very carefully. In the end, you have to vote who will be the speaker. Because the topic is the body of Sujitana Mahaprabhu. And we have uh, equal, all our spirit souls, no any other consideration. So, how do you come to the end of the time for Lord? Om Ajnana Timiranda Sarkeshanda Masvaraya Sarsur Milikam Dena Tasma Sri Guru Venamaha By the order of Guru Dev and Vaishnava's presence, please uh, give me the blessing so that I can speak. I am really nervous. I never spoke uh, in the audience like that. But what I, uh, since I was trying to uh, here properly, what Srila Gurudev was empowering through his sannasi and other disciples to speak what is the purpose of Lord Chaitanya, Lord Sri Krishna's coming in Kali Yuga in, in the form of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Srila Gurudev explains, if I recall, that he said there is a two purpose. One is internal reason and one is external. Internal reason is for himself, Sri Krishna. He wants to, uh, by quoting that verse, Premara Sonni Jas Karite Asadam Ragamarga Bhakti Luke Karite Pracharam Eitui Hetu Rashita Shakara Krishna Parama Karu Eitui Hetu Eitui Ichara Uttam. So first reason, the internal reason, Sri Gurudev uh, quoted, Radha Krishna Pranaya Mahima Kitrisho Panaeva Sattho Jeno 
अद्भुत मधुरिमा कीतृष वा मोदीय सप्तंचस्य मद अनुभव कीतृष वेति लोभा तद भावर्त जनी सती गर्व सिंधु भरिन सो फर्स्ट इंटरनल रीजन फॉर हिमसेल्फ ही वांटेड टू नेरिस द रिलीज द एसेंस ऑफ ऑल द रसस in order to uh, relish he the, he developed uh, three desires first desire was that what is the glorious greatness um, of simati radharani's love and that desire developed as uh, prem prajan prabhu and other explained from the uh, many many incident in krishna's leela he has experienced सौसंबद्ध दशा प्रेम वैचित्र वेयर स्लॉट श्री कृष्ण द ऑब्जेक्टिव कॉन्शियसनेस फ्रॉम हिज एंगल एंड देन ही सॉ दैट श्रीमती राधिका हु इज द प्रणय हु प्रणय महिमा प्रणय मीन्स वेयर श्रीमती राधारानी offer her body physical body mental body everything heart her consciousness her chitta everything completely offered to the uh, lord sri krishna and sri krishna also offered his uh, everything to radharani that stage is called pranay but when in the pranay means empathy feeling that whatever she is feeling he is feeling and whatever he is feeling she is feeling but he noticed that something she has that he does not have she is feeling she is relishing when she sees uh, what is the uh, quality most astonishing quality in him she is relishing to the highest degree amongst all uh, and because she is the mahavab swarupini so krishna found himself that oh i i want to relish that how is that she is relishing so high that i i, I cannot um, relish or takes that so then he developed the desire i want to take that mood that form in order to relish uh, then um, and also um, sokam chasa mat anubhavat kitrisha so then also after she relish uh, that most astonishing quality in him what she feels uh so ecstasy uh, after seeing his love so he, this is also another created desire with him this was a uh, short and then external reason sir gurudev says uh, one reason he gave jada jada hi dharma so gani bahut bharat paritrana sadhana vinasa jo dushkitam like this another one and just like short and then another one adut acharya when he was so angry uh, uh, He was in mad to bring Lord Sri Krishna Mahaprabhu here because uh, Mahaprabhu, without Lord Sri Krishna, nobody can distribute the highest uh, uh, destination for all the jivas that Radha Rajshan or Raja Prem. So he said that if nobody, uh, if he doesn't come, then I will destroy this universe. So he, he, to please his or to keep his word. And the third one was Anarbita Charim Chida Purnaya Bhakti Na Kolo.
they are constantly ignoring the truth <laughs> because they cannot accept that truth. Only by chikval or transcendental strength can they develop the desire to enter into their practical nature. And with only pure transcendental understanding. People are proud of video or science in this world. But real science is Krishna consciousness. The purpose of vidya is bhakti, not pride. Also, the Supreme Lord is not impersonal. And it is only by favorable ways that one can enter into his pastimes, those pastimes. The nature of the Supreme Lord Krishna's pastimes of enjoyment with his associates distributes all impetuses to the jiva and explains everything as according to the verse in the Mundaka Upanishad, Yadvinyakun Sarva Ivam Vinyakun Bhavati, including the purpose for the Jiva sojourn within the material world. Sri Krishna is the taster of all rasas, but he cannot only taste one thing, that is, the exalted moods of Swami Raja, he wants to taste that though. By the reflected perversion of this exact desire, the Jiva falls into Maya. But by Sri Krishna Chaitanya is enacting the highest Audarya is expressed. Sri Krishna is indebted to his closest beloved servitors. That is the nature of his personality. He is indebted to the gopis during the Ram's dance. They give up everything. So here, Mahaprabhu has given up all trickiness as Krishna. And he is showing the jivas everything, even. <laughs> That even though the jivas fall into Maya, was for the highest purpose. He points out in the mood of his he does this in the mood of his beloved in order to repay the debt of the gopis that he incurred during the Rasa dance. Now Parak A come in order to something dumb. In order to repay that, he has come in this way. Then when the Jeevas see this, they actually recognize, because he's not too much, that their supreme, they recognize their supreme Lord in everything, his nature, and thus they emerge into an ocean of bliss. This has not been given before, not for excellent job. One more thing. The Jeevas understand why they have been created at this time. Understand this Hare Krishna mantra. To give a book is wonderful, it's a beginning. 
but it goes deeper. When we see a new person, we should beg her. Please sit down and try to understand this knowledge. So that's all there is to say. Just go from your heart, do more, a little more. Just try to go above and beyond. Not just, oh, here's a book and that's the end. Try to make relationships and, and help people understand what is service to Radha and Krishna. Now we're going to enter a deep discussion for many hours to decide who is the best. It's very difficult, very difficult. Very tight. And we want to ask the audience, the audience. Give it high for you, please. Please raise your hand for Giridari Prabhu. And then stand up, Giridari. This is Giridari. Who is it? Say for Giridari Prabhu. Who is in favor of Radha Kanti Divi? Competition to glorify Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the presence of our beloved Sri Laguru Dev, Sri Lapati Vedanta Narayan Maharaj, we have come by his order to a decision. We announce that there is a tie. Oh, my God. 